Hi, this is Eric Smith. Time to do another quick look video. And I thought I would do it from Zechariah, the first chapter, verses 5 and 6. And the word of God reads this way. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? Yet surely my words and my statutes, which I command my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they returned and said, just as the Lord of hosts determined to do to us, according to our ways and according to our deeds, so he has dealt with us. The prophet Zechariah is prophesizing during the time when the Israelites were coming back from Babylonian captivity. You can read about this in the book of Ezra as well as Nehemiah. But this is more so during the time of the book of Ezra, where they were coming back to Jerusalem. They were rebuilding the temple. And there's a lot of opposition to the Jews rebuilding the, uh, the temple. As you know, whenever God commands his people to do something, there's going to be spiritual opposition. And there was some. And in the midst of that opposition, the Jews were getting a little lax and didn't want to finish the temple. Zechariah, in this first chapter from verses 1 all the way to 6, is actually calling the people to repentance. He's calling the people to not be lax, to not be blasé about it, that they should continue to do what God uh, shows them to do. After all, he's bringing them back from uh, 70 years of Babylonian captivity, and they were supposed to obey God. And in verse 4 of chapter 1, the prophet tells them, don't be like your fathers, uh, who the fathers preach to. That's why in verse 5 it says, your fathers, where are they? Uh, that's a rhetorical question. They're actually deceased. They're dead now. And the prophets, do they live forever? The answer, of course, rhetorically is no. The prophets that prophesied to their forefathers, um, the ones that came before them, they did not really heed what the prophets said. That's why in verse 6 it says, Yet surely my words and my statutes, and this is important before I go further, these are God's words and his statutes, his commandments. He's giving them to prophets to give to the people. So he says, Yet surely my words and my statute, which I commanded my servants, the prophets. You catch that? They are the prophets, but they're God's servants. And it's a command given to the prophets because the prophets were servants of God and they were to give it to the people. It says, did they not overtake your fathers? In other words, did not the prophecy that God gave the prophets to give to the people come to pass? And when it says overtake your fathers, it's talking about punishment. God prophesied what would happen to them if they disobeyed. They were punished. And he's, and the prophet's basically saying, Zechariah is saying, listen, the prophets of old, they're dead. The fathers that they spoke to are dead. But you know what? They had a bad end because they didn't listen to the prophecy. And now today, you're kind of following after that pattern. You're coming back. You're supposed to rebuild the temple. But now because of some opposition and being lax a days ago, you don't want to do it. You need to repent of that. So here's their reaction. It says, so they returned, better read, it means, so they repented and said, just as the Lord of hosts determined to do to us, notice that, what the Lord determines, according to our ways and according to our deeds, so he has dealt with us. God is going to determine your blessing or your punishment according to your ways and according to your deeds. God hears the things that you say watches the things that you do, and knows what you're thinking. He's going to deal with you according to that. In linear time, God is going to do that, though he's omniscient and he already knows how you're going to react. But as he's speaking to the prophet to speak to the people, he's letting them know in real time, you need to repent because that's your responsibility. And here we see that they did return to the Lord. They did repent because they wanted to obey God, and they did complete and uh, finish and complete the temple. Dear Christian, today, we can be lax in our work for the Lord. There's times that God is showing us how to do things and telling us what to do in his word. And yet we don't want to go on. Sometimes we can get tired. Sometimes we have opposition in the form of persecution. And many times we don't want to go further. But sometimes not going further actually can be sinful and we get lazy and we get discouraged. 
Listen, that's going to happen in the flesh. But at the same time, we're not to disobey God. We're supposed to obey. And just like Zechariah was telling these people, hey, you keep going. You finish the temple. Today, we need to learn to finish what God shows us to do. Because God is always going to be with us and he's always going to give us the strength to do it. Remember, God sent them to Babylonian captivity for 70 years as a punishment, but told them ahead of time, you're going to return to the land. Now they were returning. They need to rebuild the temple. And Zechariah was telling them that that's what they needed to do. But just remember that your forefathers, they disobeyed and the word of God came true to them today. Return unto the Lord. Don't be like your forefathers. So this is Zechariah chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. I just want to do a quick look to remind you that throughout Scripture, you're going to see that God's people need to repent of things that they're doing. Today, it's the same way. We need to repent of things and we need to return unto the Lord and tell them, hey, whatever you determine to do to us is right. Because if we disobey, we're going to get punished. If we obey, we're going to serve your purposes your revealed purposes, and we're going to be blessed. As always, if the videos on this channel have encouraged your Christian walk and edified you in any way whatsoever, but you have not subscribed to my channel yet and you want to, hit the button. If you want to leave any comments, please do so, but please don't be snarky. Please do not be profane. We want to be Christ-like in everything we say and do as Christians. And until we do another quick look, read the scriptures, read uh, the minor prophets and see that their prophecies weren't always about gloom and doom. They had to tell the people to do the right thing. But when the people repented and did the right thing, they served the purposes of God. And today, as Christians, we want to serve God's purposes as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And God bless.